Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne, welcoming you back to my channel. Thank you for finding me. If you're new, I post every week and I am based here in Melbourne in Australia and I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids without any grow lights or greenhouses or humidifiers. They're either indoors or outdoors or get out of the pool. If that's of interest, do hit subscribe. And today, plant lovers, I think it's all about fragrance. It just occurred to me that I've got one, two, three, four orchids in bloom that have the most beautiful, subtle, but beautiful of fragrances. And I thought, hmm, why not make a video about that? Because, and this just proves what a rank amateur I am was, I didn't even know orchids could have a fragrance. So the first orchid I got to flower was an Oncidium and it's called Pacific Sunrise Hakalau. And it had flowered for me once and I had never noticed because <laughs> it was somewhere where you don't really get your nose in. And then it flowered a second time and I was thrilled and I put it on the dining table just so we could love it as it was in bloom. And I thought, what is that amazing chocolate spicy fragrance? It was the orchid. It opened a whole new world for me, plant lovers. So here am I, it's probably old hat to you, but it wasn't to me. So let's go through a few of my learnings about fragrance in orchids. Of course, specifically the ones that I grow, which are cold, cool, intermediate. Now, there are many orchids and there are many fragrance types, but this is just about the ones I've grown and my experience with them. So let us kick off with that first one, which was an Oncidium hybrid called Pacific Sunrise Hakalau, as I showed you. But this one here is a similar type of Oncidium hybrid, and this is a famous Shari Baby type. So let's look at this. It's got two spikes and it's sensational. And I just want to confirm the name. It is Shari Baby Red Fantasy. The Shari Baby types are available, I think, just about all around the world because they're amazing. Firstly, they're floriferous. Don't you love that word? So this one has two spikes and you can see it is covered in blooms. Most of this type of hybrid Oncidium tends to have a similar habit. So quite long spikes covered in bloom and to differing degrees of fragrance. But the Shari Baby types are perhaps most famous for their fragrance. So they have been hybridized to really accentuate that. And the fragrance, ah, it is a vanilla chocolate spice and it is beautiful, but it's subtle as well. So it's not gonna overpower you. If you have this in a room somewhere, it's gonna be one of those things that you notice and are curious about. You're not gonna be hit across the head by and want to throw up. <laughs> so some interesting things then about the fragrances that I have noticed on my orchids is that the first thing is the fragrance, obviously originally in their species type, is all about attracting the pollinator. So depending when the pollinator is busy doing its thing is when the fragrance is gonna be most active. So for most of these that I've got here, that is during the day. So the fragrance kind of switches on around 10.30 a.m. and it reaches its peak at about three and then kind of switches off. And that is also determined by the brightness and the ambient temperature. So a warmer day sort of stimulates a, a greater fragrance. I don't know, maybe that's chemistry and not actually about the flower, but anyway, that's what I have experienced. Now, if you've got an orchid type that is pollinated by a nighttime pollinator, then the fragrance will come out at night. But all of these that I've got here are daytime fragrance orchids. The other thing is that as when the flower first starts to emerge, the fragrance is either almost non-existent or very weak. As all of the blooms mature and they've been open for a bit, the fragrance gets stronger, which again makes logical sense in terms of the peak conditions for it to be pollinated and to produce viable seed. You kind of want mature flowers, not young strapping things that have no wherewithal. So I have thought to myself, hmm, this orchid has no fragrance, only to discover a week later when the flower has matured that in fact it does. Which is a nice segue to this bloom here. So let's farewell Shari Baby, even though it is the most beautiful thing. And let us talk to this, which is a Colmenara. And I did a care video about this one, which I will link here. Now, Colmenara have been renamed on Costelle, which I just don't like because Mr. Coleman would be forever forgotten. Jeremiah Coleman was the guy who 
crossed three different types of orchids to produce these and I feel we should remember him. Anyway, this was a no ID orchid that I did a COVID rescue of before a nursery that I love closed. It had a dead flower spike and no label. The flower spike had no color, I couldn't see what it was. Anyway, it's just bloomed and I love it. Look at that. It is a Colmenara wildcat black cat. Now, there are a couple of wildcat types. This one though is the darkest. Um, there is one that's quite similar, but the lip is a lot redder. So I think this one is black cat, but you know, I could well be wrong. But plant lovers, the point is it opened. I thought, hmm, beautiful orchid, but no fragrance. So I moved it to a spot where I could enjoy the blooms, which happens to be in the bedroom. And I was lying on the bed reading a book as one does in lockdown in Melbourne. And it's quite sunny in the afternoon. And I thought, what is that fragrance? It's this. And you know, this has, I have described just like a spicy tuberose smell. Again, it's not overwhelming, but I was sitting on the bed. The orchid was quite a few meters away from me, about six feet. And there was this just gentle, beautiful fragrance. Absolutely stunning. So the Colmenara, mm, a beautiful orchid. Again, it's probably going to depend upon the exact hybrid you've got as to the relative strength or not of its fragrance, but I would hazard a guess that all the wildcats are gonna have a similar beautiful fragrance. But like me, I didn't realize it did have a fragrance until the flowers had really quite matured. So at least a week or so after the first ones had opened. But there you go. Also a long lasting bloom, as is Shari Baby, but as the flowers begin to turn, the fragrance obviously will start to diminish. And by the end of the life cycle of the flower, you won't have much fragrance, but it will still all look beautiful. Okie dokie, let's put this baby back and look at this one. Heavens, it's like a fabulous florist. Now this is a species Odontoglossum, which I love. And it is called Odontoglossum puchellum. And I made a specific video about this, which I will also link above. This is a video of lots of links, but this one. So firstly, this is a species orchid. Now the hybrids like Shari Baby and Colmenara tend to have been bred to bloom twice a year, whereas you'll often find with a the species, they'll just bloom once a year. So this one is a once a year, otherwise known as annual <laughs> bloomer, but the fragrance, Ah, oh, now it is late winter here in Melbourne at the moment, and this smells like a daffodil jonquil mega mix, which is funny because they are also in bloom right now here in Melbourne, but a really beautiful fragrance. And again, I hadn't really noticed because this one is a cold to cool grower and it's outdoors all year for me, undercover, but it means that I don't often <laughs> get my nose around it, but it really is stunning. Odontoglossum is one of the parents of the twinkle type of orchid. So as you know, those twinkle types also have a fragrance. And one of the other parents of that is an Oncidium species called Sotanum, which I also made a video about, which is really gorgeous. I have to say though, Weedly Mine didn't have a very strong fragrance, but most of the twinkle types have been bred for their fragrance. So they will be similar in many regards to this and that Sotanum bloom. So that is something else you can really go to town on if you're all about fragrance. Okie doke, last cab off the rank that I have in bloom now is my trusty Meltoniopsis. Look at that. And in fact, there is another spike that's just opening there. This one is slightly older. And in fact, one of the flowers has turned. But this spike, ooh, must be, it was over a month old. And the fragrance is amazing. Now for me, Miltoniopsis smell like marigolds. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful fragrance. Again, light, spicy, but very marigold-like. Ah, oh, yum. Now, I have made innumerable Miltoniopsis videos. It seems people find them often quite tricky. Maybe it's just beginner's luck, but I have a bit of luck with Miltoniopsis. This one seems fine. And the name of this, in case you're curious, this has been the star of a few videos. So you might know the name if you've watched any of my videos, is Kelly Spangled Banner. And again, proving my amateur status, when this bloomed the first time for me, it was in a spot where I wasn't that close to it often. 
and I didn't notice the fragrance. And again, like my other Oncidium Pacific Sunrise Hakalau, the second time it bloomed, I put it on the dining table so we could just enjoy it more often. And I again thought, what's that amazing fragrance? I can smell marigolds in the dining room. It was this, so there you go. Proves I know nothing, plant lovers. So if you have any questions about any of these, there are care videos for each of the types and I'll link those below. But generally though, not dissimilar conditions, although the Odontoglossum is definitely a cold grower. So that one is outdoors all year. The others take basic Oncidium care and the Miltoniopsis, as we know, does not like heat. I find Oncidiums are a little bit more forgiving of higher temperatures. So Miltoniopsis uh, do tend to like cooler conditions, not cold because I've learned through almost fatal mistakes that they don't like cold weather, but they do like cool weather. So that's the only caveat about Metoniopsis, I find. There we are, plant lovers. I am just, oh man, I wish I could send you the fragrance um, <laughs> through some magic. You know, if 3D TV is next, then surely smell -O vision has to be next on the agenda. But the fragrance is are really beautiful. So if you want to grow orchids, particularly for their fragrance, have a little research. Now, sometimes though, the particular plant you get might just not have that fragrance gene really well switched on. So you could be disappointed, but I think you're safe to say that with hybrid types like Shari Baby, for example, which are famed for their fragrance, you'll be pretty sure to get an individual plant that is fragrant. Some sellers actually sell their orchids under the subheading fragrant, which is a really great way to go. There are many, many others. I am just talking about the ones that I've got in bloom now. I have others that are beautifully fragrant as well. Many dendrobiums are fragrant. Some cymbidiums have been bred for their fragrance. Vanders, which I can't grow here in Melbourne, famed for their fragrance. So there are many, many types. So no matter what your climatic conditions and the type of orchids you can grow, there'll be something within that range that is gonna be fragrant that will just, make your day and bring you joy. Because I can tell you, there is nothing as joyous as discovering that your orchid has the most beautiful fragrance. Anyway, there we are, plant lovers. I hope you've enjoyed this quick delve down fragrance lane with my orchids that are in bloom now. Look at that Shari baby. Ah, oh, my goodness, it is just stunning. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do hit subscribe if you're remotely interested. And I look forward to seeing you next week with some other adventure. What it will be, I do not know, but I have just had a delivery from Ikea of new plant stands because it's getting a bit crazy outside. So once I've set those up, maybe it's time for a reveal, which is not really a reveal, but to show you where I grow my orchids. Anyway, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week.